This right here is the ROG Swift OLED PG49WCD, and as you can see, it is a very large 49-inch ultra-wide gaming monitor. It has a curved QD OLED panel with 144Hz refresh rate and a resolution of 5120 by 1440p, so it is pretty much like two 27-inch Quad HD monitors just stuck to each other. It also has all the advantages of QD OLED technology in general, so it has uh, pretty much instant response times, it has proper true black performance, uh, lots of brightness and a great color reproduction, which makes it a great option for HDR content as well. And if you were worried about the fact that the previous QD OLEDs had some text clarity issues because of their pixel layout, uh, the latest generation of panels is supposed to be better in that regard as well. So without further ado, uh, let's check out this massive monitor and let's Let's see how it performs and if it's worth getting it or not. Let's begin. I think the size and resolution are the first things that make this monitor interesting. The 34-inch 1440p QD OLEDs that I've seen so far performed really well, but for anyone that uses their PC for more than just gaming, I do think they didn't offer enough pixels compared to uh, either 4K monitors or 38-inch 1600p ultrawides, and then especially so if you do some sort of creative work. So with this resolution, we are finally getting more horizontal workspace. Visually, I really do like this ASUS design. Uh, it is built really well, and it looks just a bit cleaner than some of the very intense gaming designs they had on some previous models. It doesn't even look that large or that bulky considering how big the display is. It has a relatively light curve of only 1800R, so it's not that deep, and as long as your desk is wide enough, it will just work really well. The stand is mostly metal, and even though it is also very well made, if you touch the sides, it will wobble a bit, because this is basically unavoidable with a size like this. And if you compare it to other ultrawides, it is actually done quite well. They did add some RGB to the back with the little matrix style logo, which can look really nice if the back of your monitor is visible, but it doesn't really add anything if you cannot see the back because it doesn't have enough LEDs to light up the wall behind it. In terms of connections, you do get a single DisplayPort 1.4 connection, a single HDMI 2.1 connection, and a USB Type-C connection with 90 watt power delivery. You also get a USB hub and a surprisingly interesting KVM feature, which also kind of sets this monitor apart from others. So if you connect your peripherals to it and then use a USB cable to connect it to two different systems, it can seamlessly switch over your keyboard and mouse from one system to the other on one single screen. So it's a proper picture-by-picture -picture mode. Uh, you can even drag files from one system to the other and transfer data that way, which I think is really cool. Just keep in mind that uh, even though it says it doesn't require any additional software, it does automatically install an app to make it work. So that might be an issue for some of you that have work-issued laptops. There's actually a video on the product page on how this smart uh, KVM feature works, and uh, I will also leave a link in the description of this video, so if you want to quickly learn a bit more about it, you can just go ahead and check it out. The OSD is done pretty well, as we've learned to expect from ASUS. It is clear and intuitive, and it is fast and pretty snappy, and just responds well using the joystick at the bottom of the screen. But if you prefer, you can also use a software package and then use your mouse instead. Both options are completely fine. But let's talk about the actual panel and how it performs. When it comes to brightness, it does really well. In SDR mode, the peak brightness was just over 502 nits, and like with every other OLED panel, it does go lower as more parts of the screen light up. So with a completely white image, it was at around 290 nits, which is still pretty bright for a large OLED screen. Now, every OLED also has that brightness shift as you start showing more bright areas on the screen, and I personally don't really notice it nearly as much on this Samsung QD OLED panel as I did on the LG C1 panel that we use uh, here in the office. I mean, it does happen, but it doesn't get as dim as the LG. And if that still bothers you, the screen does have that uniform brightness feature that uh, keeps it consistent all the time, so you don't have to see those shifts at all. And what it does is that it basically just limits the brightness to 280-ish nits. And even though that doesn't sound that bright, 
OLED screens have perfect black levels, so subjectively, uh, 280 nits feels brighter than uh, when you have a regular monitor that is doing 350 nits, for example. So depending on the situation and your preference, you can either go for a higher brightness or you can choose to just keep it consistent. Both options are just viable. Minimum brightness comes in at 27 nits, so it's nice and dim and you can easily work or game in pitch dark rooms as well. And in the HDR mode, the brightness peaks at just over 1000 nits. And it can consistently do around 970 nits in zones of around 5% of the display. So again, this is a very good result because some of the previous QD OLED panels required almost impossible scenarios uh, to get anywhere near 1000 nits. Asus claims that the screen has custom heat sinks and graphene film behind the panel to keep the uh, temperatures down and the brightness up. But until we test more of these uh, next-gen QD OLED panels, it's really hard to say if this great uh, HDR brightness is coming from Asus or is it just coming from the Samsung panel itself. But it is also not just about the brightness, because the whole HDR experience is just great. Uh, it can really put out a consistently bright, super colorful image that actually looks natural. So they really figured out how to calibrate for HDR content, which is not something that every brand knows how to do. In terms of color, you do get that 100% sRGB and 99.9% .9 P3 gamut coverage, which is in line with their claims. And then with 168% of sRGB in terms of volume, it just has a proper wide gamut. Default factory calibration for creative use is pretty good, uh, definitely close enough for most use cases, but it is also not perfect with some larger color deviations with red and orange. I mean, it is not as bad as the red bar suggests, but it's just that we've kind of gotten used to OLEDs coming with perfect color accuracy out of the box. And the same goes for the sRGB calibration. It is close to perfect, but not quite. Still, I would say that this is more than fine for most people. And for those of you that need that 100% perfect color reproduction, you can just manually calibrate it because uh, the wide gamut will definitely allow you to do it perfectly. Since this is an OLED panel that just turns the pixels off when displaying black, the contrast is perfect, and then especially so in darker rooms. It does have an anti-reflective coating, so it's not as glossy as traditional OLEDs, but that does mean that in very bright rooms, it might end up looking a bit more grayish. I still think it's an improvement over the 34-inch QD OLED models, where the grayness was just much more noticeable, in my opinion. The uniformity of the panel is great, which is what you would expect from a self-lit OLED without any backlight, but actually that isn't always the case. Uh, the center is still a tiny bit brighter than the corners, but it is consistent all around and you will never see those differences subjectively. As much as previous QD OLED displays were great for gaming and any other kind of HDR content consumption, uh, they did have issues with text clarity and color fringing in particular because of their uh, sub-pixel layout. Now, I personally didn't mind it as much, but for some people it was just more of an issue. And with this new generation of QD OLED panels, they improved the sub-pixel layout a bit. So the text clarity is visibly better, it does look a bit sharper and a bit more crisp, but the color fringing is still present. So if that bothered you before, this new generation of panels will be more or less the same. But let's talk speed because this monitor is just super fast. It has sub one millisecond response times generally, or just above that when the pixel starts at zero RGB or being off. It's just the nature of the panel as well. So you don't have to waste time figuring out uh, which overdrive mode works best for you. And just like with every other OLED or QD OLED, uh, there is a tiny bit of overshoot when the pixel comes uh, from a completely off state, but that is very minimal and not something that you can actually see. In this image, you can also see it still has that small dip on every refresh cycle. So if you're one of those rare people that finds OLED screens uncomfortable, uh, this next gen QD OLED will be just the same. Now, as I said at the start, uh, this panel has a refresh rate of 144 Hertz, which is a bit surprising because other 49-inch QD OLEDs can go up to 240 hertz instead, and you can see a difference between 144 and 240 hertz if you put them side by side. Now, motion clarity is good on this one, but 240 hertz is technically better. And while I personally don't think this is a big deal because no one would buy this monitor to play competitive Counter-Strike on, 
it is a fact to consider. Now, total latency is excellent. It is a bit faster than the 34-inch QD OLEDs I tested before, and only just behind the 240Hz PG27A QDM. So the input latency is practically zero, which is important for anyone that is considering this monitor for a sim racing or something similar. So it is an excellent panel overall. Uh, 240 hertz would be nicer, but not that many games will run faster than 144 FPS on this resolution anyway. Uh, it is probably more important that it is FreeSync Premium Pro and VESA Adaptive Sync certified, and that it is officially G-Sync compatible, so you will get a good variable refresh rate experience with uh, any brand of GPUs. When it comes to power consumption, OLED panels can really vary a lot depending on what is going on on the screen. So in SDR mode, it goes from about 25 watts with a mostly black background to 75 watts when showing a full white image. And I typically saw uh, 35 to 45 watts during regular use and SDR gaming, so it's not using that much power considering the screen size. The RGB effects on the back of a monitor typically use uh, about 1 to 2 watts. But here, the matrix effect on the back with all those separate lights uses about 5 watts. So the standby use goes from 1 to 6 watts if you leave the RGB on. And that doesn't really sound like a whole lot, but if you leave it on 24-7, uh, depending on your energy rates, that can add up, which doesn't make any sense at all if you don't see it. So if your monitor is next to a wall, just turn the RGB off. You do not need it. Now, ASUS is offering a two-year-long warranty on these monitors, and uh, while burn-in is becoming less of an issue and can be avoided uh, with careful content use, uh, it can also happen, and keep in mind, ASUS does not specify that burn-in is covered under that warranty. Now, some brands like uh, Corsair and Alienware, for example, uh, specifically mention burn-in in their warranty policy, and I do think that is very important. I did ask ASUS about it, and they said that they will generally honor burn-in under warranty, assuming that people don't just uh, turn off the OLED protection settings, but they're still kind of working on a proper public statement about it, because without a clear statement to fall back on, you basically need to decide whether you trust ASUS enough to do the right thing when it actually matters. I also think that they should increase the uh, warranty to at least three years, like many other brands do. Because if you buy a high-end monitor and you spend a lot of money on it, you should at least get a guarantee that you will use it for the next three years without any big issues. But what is a lot of money in this case? I mean, this monitor will not be cheap, as you could have guessed, uh, but it is actually not as expensive as I thought it would be. Uh, I only have our local price right now, which is 1500 euros, including VAT, so that should put it at around uh, $1,250 in the US without taxes, which is a lot of money, but it isn't that much for a proper high-end monitor. And this is a proper high-end monitor with high-end specs and with great performance to back them up. So I don't think this is an unreasonable price. It is only a bit more than the 34-inch QD OLEDs used to be uh, when they launched over a year ago. While this one offers uh, more pixels, it offers better features, uh, better performance, and then especially so when it comes to HDR, plus it has an improved sub-pixel layout. Uh, that being said, 34-inch uh, QD OLEDs have dropped in price a lot, and you can easily find them for under $1,000 or euros, and they are still a very good alternative if you want to spend less. But I also kind of expect that these 49-inch models will start dropping in price as well, especially as uh, more and more 49-inch models become available. So if you want to spend less, but you still want a 49-inch screen, uh, waiting a little bit longer might work out the best. So to sum it all up, the PG49 WCD is built really well, it performs really well, it has some interesting and unique features like the smart KVM switch, for example, and while I still need to test more of the other 49-inch monitors that will be coming to the market, the ROG has set a standard here, and it will be a challenge to match this performance. And then especially so when it comes to HDR. And if you are going for this type of a monitor, you're also probably looking for a good and immersive image quality as well. Now, it doesn't completely solve that uh, text clarity concerns that some people 
had with QD OLEDs in general, but I would say it is a slight improvement, so it is going in the right direction. However, ASUS needs to improve their warranty policy, so it mentions that burn-in is covered, and ideally they need to make it three years long instead of two. And uh, while some other competing brands will be launching new 49-inch QD OLED monitors with 240Hz refresh rate, this model only comes with 144 so you will have to decide for yourself if that is important to you or not. Of course, it will all come down to pricing as well, especially when we see more of these 49-inch uh, panels on the market. But if ASUS manages to keep the price uh, nice and competitive, and also sort their warranty, this will be a fantastic monitor to consider and definitely the one to recommend. Now, that is all I have for today, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their brand new Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, including the new 12 volt high power cable for the latest RTX graphics cards. And as a little bonus, you get a cozy 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and sticking to the end of this video. Uh, if you liked it and you want to see more content like this one, uh, do consider clicking that subscribe button. Bye all, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.